Hey. Hey, how you doing? Say welcome to Appalachia's homestead. So I've got something to tell you, Danny DeVito. I had somebody comment on my channel the other day. This little old nice lady, she said that uh, she enjoys our channel, but she doesn't want us talking about self-reliance or all the things that are going on because she thinks we should just show our farm animals and she wants me to show my wood cook stove. Just do that only. Do you want to tell her what will happen to all of our farm animals, including you, if we don't speak truth? Just saying. Good morning, friends. Look here. Look at all these precious items together, all in one. video as hodgepodgey as I can this morning because I want to get it out of the way and make the next video which is going to be my YouTube 200,000 giveaway subscriber video. Shabam! I was going to say party. <laughs> but um, that's coming up. Hopefully I will film that today. I'm a couple of days behind. If you follow me on Facebook, I announced I was having a huge giveaway on my YouTube channel to a subscriber so I'm going to have a video telling you exactly all about that and the comments will be on that video and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go off of that. But yeah, if you want to learn how to can meat and have a really nice canner to put your foods away in your pantry, yeah, the All-American Canner 921, I'm going to buy and send one to a subscriber. So if you haven't subscribed, go do that. But listen, if you're going to be, listen, you need fight back. I tell you this all, all the time. I've been telling you this for years. So I'm about to go uh, milk, and uh, I milk twice a day, as you know, my cow, Miss Lovey, and she's wonderful. But this is what you need to spray. This is a brand new bottle. I've got a brand new bottle. So this is what I spray on her teats after every single milking. And when I started using these products, this product several years ago on my goats and my cows that I've milked for years, never had a problem. Never had a problem. Ironically, it's called fight back say that a lot so my stanchion only lacks a roof and we only can do that work on that a little bit each week so we're almost at the end so i've got to get the roof ordered and put on for her she will go into the stall but right now i'm in the uh routine of just milking her right here in the field so miss lovey is so good and she's so well trained i got her uh, two years ago and I trained her to be milked and she did pretty good the first time but this time she's done wonderful so she'll literally just stand here and eat don't need a thing to assist me and we can milk that's what I'm talking about say so we have good mornings we have rough mornings too So we're going to film the rest of this video in the car. I got everything cleaned up and number one, it has not rained. It was supposed to be cooler and rain. So it was a cool morning, but it's gotten up into the sixties, which is nice and it's sunny and there is no rain so far. So it's a little warm after all that, especially, but here's the deal. So like I said, my next video that I'll be putting up to, uh, right after this one will be the formal video about my giveaway coming up. And I just want to thank you for your support. Our channel growth is just incredible right now. And I thank so many of you for coming along for so many years and for just, you know, being wonderful to us. And to all of you new folks out there in uh, just in the last couple of weeks that have, you know, joined Appalachia's Homestead here, Facebook and Instagram. 
So here's what I want to stress to you. I know I made a scene, you know, and you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, how mean, she's so mean. She's so mean. No, I'm not. Let me tell you what's mean. What is mean is literally the whole notion that people expect other people, it's not even about Americans anymore, to turn a blind eye to everything that's going on. Stop. People have to make choices and work with their, you know, their convictions and, and figure out where they draw the line or where they, you know, have boundaries in their life and what they're willing to step out and do. A lot of people are just cowards. And uh, I just, I mean, they are. that pe People in this day and age have, a lot of us have never really been truly tested on the, the very foundations that we stand on, our rights. We've not been really truly tested on whether we're going to eat, whether we're going to feed our children, whether we're going to be warm for winter. And so now a lot of us are beginning to feel that in different, from different ways. A lot of us are feeling it from different directions all at once. I get a lot of questions right now um, from different viewers asking me why other people, who you are referring to, I'm not really sure, but they're not talking politics. They're not talking world events. They're not talking a food chain supply breakdown. They're not telling people to try to be as self-reliant as possible with urgency. You know, I, I can't speak for anybody but myself, so I don't know who all you're speaking to. I've had some specifics said to me that they would prefer to go watch their channel because they don't get political versus they feel that I am being political. Well, I hate to tell you right now, but everything that's going on affects all of us, but it especially affects people like me being able to do what I do and to be able to share that with you. And when I say share that with you, what I mean is it's going to be very difficult to make videos about chickens if, you know, all I'm going to be worried about is feeding them and potentially putting them in the freezer. That's very limited content. Um, and so, you know, a lot of people come to my channel because they like to see things of, of from the past. They like, they like talking about certain discussions. They like history. They like talking about heritage and they like talking about general care. So this lady, you know, said to me the other day, she says, I don't want to hear all of this. Well, ma'am, I'm sorry. You need to unfollow because I'm not going to stop. You need to go watch some of these other channels that you speak of that don't do these things and scare you. Like I said in my previous video, folks, I'm not trying to scare anybody. If you're scared, I'm not the one that did it to you. Do you realize how much it costs for the average, just the, well, big farmers too, but I can only speak from a small farm and homesteader. Do you know how much my feed bill is right now? Do you know how difficult it is? Do you know how much if you were to come to my farm and were to buy a gallon of raw milk for me, which I do not sell, so don't even start that. I do not sell my raw milk. I have zero customers in that realm. You couldn't afford it because you're going to have to cover my time, my feed bill, my hay, the time I took to procure that milk and everything else down the road. Raw milk is like gold. So if you already think things like that are expensive, Give it just a couple of more weeks at this rate. I'm not even saying months or even in a year. I don't. I can't even imagine where we're headed as far as that goes. I'm just talking about what I'm seeing happen to the average person and average consumer and average farmer just in the last, oh, six to eight weeks alone. And it hasn't gotten any better. No one's doing anything about it. Nor are they trying to. That's deliberate. So I'm sorry if you get a little frightful if I tell you that, but I'm telling you the truth because I'm trying to look out for you. This is what I told this person. I'm trying to fight for you. I'm trying to wake you up. I'm trying to make you understand how critical and crucial and how delicate and interconnected all of these things are. You cannot just stick your head in the sand. If that is the route that you choose, you will be the one in the end to pay the consequence much harder than a lot of us that are trying to talk and that are trying to do and they're trying to motivate people. So understand there is a movement to shh, 
silence you. Shh. Oh, hush, little girl. You're such a pretty girl. Why don't you just go milk your cow? Yeah. We don't want to talk about... Oh, I know. Your kids may not eat next week, but that that's such a scary subject. Let's not talk about that. Your spouse is going to lose his job? That might... Ooh. Really? Oh. Mm. Might not want to mention that, see, because if you have a problem with it, you might mo motivate other people to speak out and to stand up for themselves because they too have gone through the same thing or are about to. We can't have that. Shh. Hush, little girl. Hush. So I recognize what you're doing. And like I've said before, these are just a handful of people out of tens of thousands of people. But it's enough to raise a concern and to watch and to be aware that this is really happening and that there are actually people that are okay with everything that's going on. And when I say okay, you're okay if you're silent because you're scared. I get it. You know, you've always shown uh, how to make kids crafts. Well, good luck going and getting all your crafts items. You know, how much is that going to cost you? Are you going to be able to effectively get all the things that you need to make all your crafts so that you can share it on your blog or share it on your YouTube channel? And at what point does that become, you know, less cost effective for you so you stop? And so everyone else in the world learns nothing about making cute little kid crafts. Because that's what's happening right now. Just think about if that affects people that actually grow and grow food and teach you how to milk cows and teach you how to grow tomato plants and teach you how to take care of chickens. How are you going to be able to afford to have chickens if you can't afford to feed them? Don't say I'm just going to let them free range because you know what? That's the, some of the dumbest things I've ever heard from people because the fact of the matter is a lot of people that can have a, a lot of chickens that can free range, a lot of them live in a place like me and if I don't try to really guard my chickens, here's what happens. Tonight the owl will take out about three. Tomorrow I'll have about ten hawks show up and then the next day all of the coyotes are going to show up just like people down the road from me point blank said I can't keep a chicken if my life depended on it because I prefer to free range my birds if I can but the thing is is I spend more money just getting birds and then I end up feeding all the wildlife well folks in a crisis when you are trying to feed yourself I seriously doubt you're trying to feed all the coyotes there's a lot of ridiculous notions of people in terms of they think they can just do this and do that it's not that simple there's a lot to learn. There's a lot that you have to preserve. And there's a lot of things that you have to pay for. Your chicken lady right now, if you go and you get eggs from her, I've said this on Facebook and I may have said it here, I hope you are tipping her bigger than life. Because I'm telling you, the average chicken owner right now that's selling her eggs, it could be a little child. It could be a family. But I'm just going to say her, like me. Folks, we're, we're going backwards. So do you know what the average person, homesteader, farmer, folks that like to sell products, say at farmer's markets, etc., etc. If this all continues to erode like it is, you're not going to see these people selling their goods in this fashion, or you're going to see far less because they're not going to be able to do it. They're going to have to pull back. If I have to pull back my chickens for whatever reason, that's not in that's not in the works as of this moment but don't think that I haven't thought about it if I have to cut down my goats or sell a cow or whatever I'm not going to be able to provide as many goods as a whole so therefore I'm going to make sure that I have enough for just my family and perhaps a few friends I won't be giving you the option Farmers markets won't be able to afford to give you the option to go and pay for their goods. Now, some of you will say, well, I'll go anyway. Well, that's great. I hope you do. But when you're looking at $10 tomatoes, most people aren't going to be able to afford that. 
because when things inflation and hyperinflation and devastation hit so hard, every penny will count because everything across the board is going to be so dang expensive. You're already changing your shopping habits. I guarantee it. You're already pulling back driving places because you're paying three fifty plus a gallon for gas. Whereas not even a year ago, like here, we were paying a dollar fifty nine on November the eighth. Doesn't matter why, doesn't matter how, doesn't matter who. I'm talking about the nuts and bolts of the fact that this is the way that it is. And so when people can't afford gas, you know, to get to work, they're not going to buy a $10 tomato. Now, I'm being facetious. You know what I mean. But what I'm saying is if you've got a $10 tomato at the farmer's market, why would I drive extra, pay for parking to go to the farmer's market, which in some cases you have to, and shop around when I'll just zap into the uh, Aldi over here and maybe I'll get lucky and get a $7 tomato from God knows where if they even have it. Or you know what? Perhaps I just won't buy a tomato at all. Maybe that's one of the things I'll go without, or maybe that's one of the things that I'll ration. So if you're the tomato seller, or you sell the eggs, or you sell these things, you might get hit with people just pulling back and cutting you out altogether because they can't afford your prices. You can't help your prices because of everything going on. So yeah, the little banty rooster, he would feed one person for one meal, maybe two. So maybe me prepping him for the crock pot is a good idea because a little bit of protein goes a long way when you're in a crisis, right? So I don't know why other people are being silent because I find all of this very scary in terms of the fact that why isn't anything being done? That should be your fear factor. But in the end, remember, if fear is paralyzing you, understand where this is coming from and understand you're being lied to when you're told to shut up and told to sit down and told to take it like a good little girl. Are those people going to come and help you? Are they going to pay your electric bill this winter? Are they going to feed your children? I doubt it. So folks, I can only speak for myself and I can only speak for the fact that every night when I lay my head down, I look up and I say my prayers and I'm, I try so hard to talk everything out with the Lord. And I am reminded that I know fear is a liar, but we're human too. But the way to grasp it is to admit what's going on and to understand what's going on and to understand it affects every single one of us. And to conclude what I said about my egg lady, I'm really serious when I tell you right now, if you get eggs from a local friend or neighbor and she is virtually giving you eggs or charging you very, very little, if you can spare an extra dollar or three or five for her, you need to do so. Because I'm telling you here alone where people do a lot of shopping are local areas and they are already paying depending on exactly where they go they can pay i'm not even talking organic y'all they can pay anywhere from baseline feed 14 to 20 dollars a bag that doesn't include anything else so when you give her a buck 50 for that dozen of eggs especially in the fall and the winter time she's going backwards because feed is continuing to go up so if you value these farmers and these homesteaders and friends in your life, help them out. Help them out. And just know that you did something really good today because I'm telling you, it matters. If you like this video, like and subscribe. We like you being here. I'm a hot mess, I know, but I haven't made a video in a couple of days and uh, we... Uh, have some stuff lined up. It's just been a busy week. You know, we're trying to take care of business like so many like you. And social media has been very wild this week. Folks, this is no time to be quiet. Because remember, those that are being quiet are doing it because they are scared. Because they are compliant. Or because they agree. 
and I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but all three are going to get them in the same spot. And we don't want that for them, and we especially don't want that for us. Hope you're well. Hope you are so busy you can't see straight. Keep praying. Be peaceful. But do not stick your head in the sand. Your children are depending on you. I promise. We'll see you on the next video.